Welcome to this episode of Amazing Facts About Butterflies. In this second episode, I will talk about etymology, taxonomy, and phylogeny, general description of biology and about distribution and migration. Let's start with talking about etymology. The Oxford English Dictionary derives the word straightforwardly from Old English beautifully oge, butterfly, similar names in Old Dutch and Old High German show that the name is ancient, but Modern Dutch and German use different words, flinder and schmetterling, and the common name often varies substantially between otherwise closely related languages. A possible source of the name is the bright yellow male of the brimstone, Gonipteryx ramni, another is that butterflies were on the wing in meadows during the spring and summer butter season while the grass was growing. Taxonomy and Phylogeny The earliest Lepidoptera fossils date to the Triassic-Jurassic boundary, around 200 million years ago. Butterflies evolved from moths, so while the butterflies are monophyletic, forming a single clade, the moths are not. The oldest known butterfly is Protocoeliades christensini from the Paleocene aged fur formation of Denmark, approximately 55 million years old, which belongs to the family Hesperiidae, skippers. Molecular clock estimates suggest that butterflies originated sometime in the mid-Cretaceous, but only significantly diversified during the Cenozoic. The oldest American butterfly is the late Eocene Prodryas Persephone from the fluorescent fossil beds, approximately 34 million years old. Traditionally, butterflies have been divided into the superfamily Papilionoidae excluding the smaller groups of the Hesperiidae, Skippers, and the more moth-like Edilidae of America. Phylogenetic analysis suggests that the traditional Papilionoidea is periphyletic with respect to the other two groups, so they should both be included within Papilionoidea, to form a single butterfly group, thereby synonymous with the Cladropolocera. General Description of Biology Butterfly adults are characterized by their four scale-covered wings, which give the Lepidoptera their name, Ancient Greek Lambda Epsilon Pi Sigma Lepis, Scale Plus Pi Tau Epsilon Rho Nu Teron, Wing. These scales give butterfly wings their color, they are pigmented with melanins that give them blacks and browns, as well as uric acid derivatives and flavones that give them yellows, but many of the blues, greens, reds and iridescent colors are created by structural coloration produced by the microstructures of the scales and hairs. As in all insects, the body is divided into three sections, the head, thorax, and abdomen. The thorax is composed of three segments, each with a pair of legs. In most families of butterfly the antennae are clubbed, unlike those of moths which may be thread-like or feathery. The long proboscis can be coiled when not in use for sipping nectar from flowers. Nearly all butterflies are diurnal, have relatively bright colors, and hold their wings vertically above their bodies when at rest, unlike the majority of moths which fly by night, are often cryptically colored, well camouflaged, and either hold their wings flat, touching the surface on which the moth is standing, or fold them closely over their bodies. Some day flying moths, such as the hummingbird hawk moth, are exceptions to these rules. Butterfly larvae, caterpillars, have a hard, sclerotist, head with strong mandibles used for cutting their food, most often leaves. They have cylindrical bodies, with ten segments to the abdomen, generally with short prolegs on segments 3 to 6 and 10. The three pairs of true legs on the thorax have five segments each. Many are well camouflaged, others are aposematic with bright colors and bristly projections containing toxic chemicals obtained from their food plants. The pupa or chrysalis, unlike that of moths, is not wrapped in a cocoon. Many butterflies are sexually dimorphic. Most butterflies have the ZW sex determination system where females are the heterogametic sex, ZW, and males homogametic, ZZ. Distribution and Migration Butterflies are distributed worldwide except Antarctica, totaling some 18,500 species. Of these, 775 are in the Arctic, 7,700 Neotropical, 1,575 Palearctic, 
3,650 are for a tropical, and 4,800 are distributed across the combined Oriental and Australian slash Oceania regions. The monarch butterfly is native to the Americas, but in the 19th century or before, spread across the world, and is now found in Australia, New Zealand, other parts of Oceania, and the Iberian Peninsula. It is not clear how it dispersed, adults may have been blown by the wind or larvae or pupae may have been accidentally transported by humans, but the presence of suitable host plants in their new environment was a necessity for their successful establishment. Many butterflies, such as the painted lady, monarch, and several danane migrate for long distances. These migrations take place over a number of generations and no single individual completes the whole trip. The eastern North American population of monarchs can travel thousands of miles southwest to overwintering sites in Mexico. There is a reverse migration in the spring. It has recently been shown that the British Painted Lady undertakes a 9,000 mile round trip in a series of steps by up to six successive generations, from tropical Africa to the Arctic Circle almost double the length of the famous migrations undertaken by monarch. Spectacular large-scale migrations associated with the monsoon are seen in peninsular India. Migrations have been studied in more recent times using winged eggs and also using stable hydrogen isotopes. Butterflies navigate using a time-compensated sun compass. They can see polarized light and therefore orient even in cloudy conditions. The polarized light near the ultraviolet spectrum appears to be particularly important. Many migratory butterflies live in semi-arid areas where breeding seasons are short. The life histories of their host plants also influence butterfly behavior. This second video in this five-part video documentary is coming to an end, but in two weeks from now, the third part will be released with a lot of more specific information about butterflies. Thank you for watching this second episode and I'll see you next time.